Breaking news, breaking news. Are you serious? Breaking news. There's, the word is out at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time today, October 12th, 2011, that the United Nations Security Council has nine votes now that are committed to vote for a Palestinian state to give the authority. President Abbas of the Palestinian, Associ of, or the Palestinian Authority says that he has the votes. He says, I have nine, and all I needed was nine out of the 15 to override and to get possession of part of Jerusalem. Let me just tell you what the Bible says. This is a significant biblical prophecy moment. I want to thank the sister from Hong Kong who uh, got this email to me, alerting me this morning. I was driving this morning. I was very early this morning. As the break of day, as the sun was coming up in the east, I turned, as I turned around and was headed the other way later, and there was the moon in the west, full moon, magnificent moon. But I thought within myself, God, what is up today? Is there anything going on today? Unaware of that at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning that the United Nations Security Council had made some commitments privately to President Authority, Palestinian Authority Abbas, that there were nine members ready to vote to seize Jerusalem. Now here's what the Bible said in Joel chapter 3. The Bible says in verse 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, and I will also gather all nations and bring, and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and have parted my land. Oh, and they have cast lots for my people. They have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Folks, this thing is going to get, it's looking like it could potentially get very ugly. In the prophetic moments of the ancient prophet Joel, who some 3,000, nearly 3,000 years ago, prophesied of potentially this coming week. Because we're on the, when are they going to vote on this? The president of Abbas of the Palestinian Authority says he has the votes. Are you serious? He says he has the votes. He says he has the votes. Now, today's the 12th of October, 2011. In two days, it's going to be October 14th, the beginning of the Feast of the Tabernacles. And for the next seven, it's, it's the most holiest feast of them. All. I mean, besides the holiest day is the Day of Atonement. But the Feast of the Tabernacles... I mean, come on. It's a seven-day event from October 14th to October 21st this year. And October 16th, is that the day they're going to vote? Is that the day? Because that's the day the comet Elenin will be its closest proximity to the Earth. The stars will be in alignment. The planets will be in alignment. The gravitational pulls, the forces of evil and of good will be cruxed in the middle of the valley of Jehoshaphat. The Bible says in one place in Malachi, multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. And the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Is the world, when you talk about this, literally nine nations of the United, of the United Nations Security Council gathering in the valley of Jehoshaphat, if you will. It's a spiritual valley. They're in New York. But they might as well be in Jehoshaphat's valley because of the, the conspiracy, the confederacy that David said in the book of Psalms in chapter 83. Do I need to read that? Probably I do. Some of you might be a first timer. Here's what the Bible said. Here's the intifada that has been already declared this year from Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt. And oh, don't count out <laughs> Medulajad of Iran. And I know some of you are upset at me of the video I did last night late that the United States reporting that the plot to kill the uh, Saudi Arabian ambassador, blow up the Saudi Arabian embassy and the Israeli embassy is just a lie. Look, I'm not sticking up for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. If you've watched my videos for the last year and a half, you know I'm constantly smacking King Abdullah of, of Saudi Arabia. I'm constantly upset at the mistreatment of women. I'm constantly criticizing the, the, the Muslim kingdom monarchy that they have there, the corruption of it. 
I'm constantly saying it's ridiculous the, of the burkas and the women aren't allowed to even drive a car and the lashes that they want to put on the women's back. Are you serious? I'm an absolute hater of Sharia law. So don't give me a lecture at the 11th hour, this false flag opportunities. Like, I'm, like I've never heard of a false flag, that I don't know anything about a false flag. Obviously, America had this plot figured out in August and are just now releasing it now because they want to make sure the timing was right to block Eric Holder's scandals that he has as the Attorney General. But I'm not even going to go there because I don't want to get political. What I want to do is stay focused on the fact that it did happen. And some of you, I think, would rather see Israel's embassy get blowed up than Iran get exposed. What? Take that with a grain of salt and relax. But there is certain people who would rather see the embassies of Israel and Saudi Arabia get blown to smithereens than for America to catch them and expose Ahmadulajad's plan from Iran. Remember, this same Ahmadulajad says he wants to blow Jerusalem and the innocent people there off the face of the map. This guy thinks it's his destiny because he's got some kind of distant DNA from the Prophet Muhammad. He believes he's destined to blow up Jerusalem, to open the gates and allow the 12th Imam to emerge from crawl out of a well or wherever he's supposed to be hiding. The Al-Mahadi, Muslim Messiah. I'm not making that up. That is what the man has said. It's amazing to me. Every time I defend Israel, there's these people that hate Israel so much. They literally hate Israel so much. They seethe with anger every time I expose a plot or a world leader who wants to destroy Jerusalem. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm never going to change on that because I'm a student of the Word of God, a scholar of the Word of God. I've read it from one end to the other several times, and I can tell you there's nowhere in the lids of this book do I ever get the authority to criticize the children of God. Never! On contrary, I'm told to bless them and to pray. Okay? Now, keep not thy silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they've consulted together with one consent, the United Nations, the Security Council, and they are confederate against Israel. Now, Joel chapter 3 says they're getting ready to go down into the valley of Jehoshaphat spiritually and potentially take half of the city, seize Judah and Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, you can support that in Zechariah. Well, I am telling you what's going to happen to those who come against Jerusalem. Read Zechariah chapter 12, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Did you hear me? All nations that come against Jerusalem. Now go to Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, and when he, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in the, in the day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, <laughs> toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Are you saved today? How close are we to this day? Just how close are we? Are you saved? Paul, I got plenty of time, do you? Well, I think I do. Are you sure? Do you realize how close we are? I mean, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. You cannot describe the year that we've had in 2011 that is just literally jumping off the pages of this Bible. I want you to send me a personal message right now. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. You're in the valley. Choose which way you're going to go.
Jesus.